Hi everyone and welcome back to another FreeCAD video. This time we're looking at an assembly workbench and how to set up a bolt and nut combination so it animates when we push the nut up and down the bolt. This is known as the screw joint in FreeCAD's assembly workbench. If we hover over the screw joint, it looks a bit complicated of how to set this up. This video is going to show you how to set it up with both simple parts and fasteners from the fasteners workbench. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let's have a look how to create this FreeCAD assembly. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. To set up an assembly screw joint, we first need to understand how the axes align with elements of the parts we've created in FreeCAD. Here I have a nut and a threaded rod. These are two separate parts. If we examine these parts, let's take the bolt for example and hide the nut. Every edge face and vertex has an axis. Let's say we select an edge, this one here. The Z axis runs through it. This is the one that will be used for the assembly workbench. When it comes to such edges as circular edges, like this one here, then the axis that will be used for assembly will run through it. This will obviously be the same for the nut. If we take the circular edge that runs around here, it will be the same axis that runs through the middle. Other edges of the nut, say this one here, will run through it this way. The same, if I take this one, the axis will run this way. This is important when we come to using the screw joint. So let's create the simple parts for our screw joint assembly. We need three parts. We need a receptacle, which is going to be the object that's going to be entered. This is going to be a hole, such as the hole for a bolt or a pilot hole on a piece of wood. And also it could be a fastener, such as a nut. We also need an insert. That's going to be the screw or bolt. Then we need a helper. And this links the two together. Let's create a simple body. And we'll call that nut body. And in here we'll create a new sketch along the XY plane. Let's hit home because I'm not aligned properly. So home on the keyboard, let's hit the XY plane. Looking down from the top. And we'll create a regular polygon in here, connect up to the center point, and come out and connect up. Let's use a circle for the center, and we'll set the circle to 20 millimeters. Click off, and the circle of the construction geometry for the regular polygon, let's use the dimensioning tool, and set that for 40 millimeters. We have our shape, let's hit close, sketch is selected, and we'll pad that by 15 millimeters. There's no thread in there, but this is just to demonstrate that screw assembly joint. So we have our receptacle, which is the nut body. The next thing we've got to model is the insert. So let's hide the nut body and create a new body. And I'm going to call this bolt body. Again, let's create a new sketch along the XY plane. And we'll create another regular polygon and set the dimensions. We'll set that one to 40 millimeters. Let's close and then use the pad. And we'll set it to 15 mil. Next, I'm going to select the face and we'll create the shaft of the bolt using a new sketch. And this is just a simple circle. So we'll use the circle, connect up, quince into the center, come out. Let's type in 20 millimeters. That's fully constrained. Let's hit close. Our sketch is selected. If not, we select it from the tree view. 
and then use the pad or pad around about 50 millimeters. So we have a simple bolt, our insert, and the nut, our receptacle. Now we need a helper. Now this just gives an axis. Let's create a body and we'll create a new sketch. Run it along the XZ plane, this one here. You notice it's running through the nut. Let's use a section view. Remember, this is not part of the nut body, it's just that it's visible. Let's click on the nut body and hide it just to save some confusion. And we'll place a line from the top running through the center, like so. Not worried about dimensioning. And again, this can be something else. This can be, say, the drawer of a clamp. Come over to the task and hit close. And this will rename to helper. The helper will link the two joints together and facilitate that movement. This allows us to change the placement of the helper to push the insert into the receptacle. So we'll use it to control the bolt and push it into the nut. So now we have our parts, let's save them. And I'm just going to take the helper and press the space bar to hide it. Now that's come over to the assembly workbench. This is the one that's installed as default in FreeCAD. Make sure nothing's selected and create a new assembly. We need to import some parts. So I'm going to import these parts here. Use the insert component and click on that. So we get a components on the left hand side. So we need a grounded part in our assembly. And the part I'm going to ground is the nut for this one. Now, depending on what we ground, will have an effect on the way we set up the assembly. I'm going to hit no, and I'm going to rotate this around the right way to about here. We look to the right. I've got this positioned here. So let's bring in the bolt. And again, quick rotation just to get it in line. And we'll place this down here. And finally, the helper. If you get an error down here, just click on it and we'll move this over to the right. Don't have to worry about that error. Let's hit OK. So we've got all the parts in our assembly. Let's ground the nut by clicking on the nut and use the toggle grounded. This is grounded now. If I click on this one, I can move it. If I double click on it, I can move it via the translate tool. But I can't move this one. So as the nut is grounded and can't move, everything else has to move in line with its axis. So the helper will slide through the grounded part. I'm going to take the helper and we'll use the sliding joint, great slider joint. Select the helper and you can see the blue line there. So we've got this axis that's popped up. And this is the one we're going to be in line with. Click once, select, and then come in and select the circular edge. Now notice the blue line, that's the z-axis. I click that. This is now in line with that z-axis. You can see it moving in and out of there. Let's hit OK. So we've got the sliding movement through the grounded part, the nut. Don't worry about the messages that are coming up down the bottom. Next, we need this to rotate. So to do that, we take the circular edge and rotate it around the helper, which has its axis in line with the nut. Let's select the revolute joint and select the circle. See the blue axis there. You can see the blue Z with this line and hit OK. So what we have now is a bolt that can turn and also by clicking on the helper, we can slide it through the nut. We part of the way there. Next, we need to create the screw animation. For that, 
we're looking for edges along the same axis. So we could take this edge here and this one, and let's create a screw joint and select one edge and select the other. Now, if I hit OK, what will happen? We move this through here, you can see nothing's really happening. It's rotating, but nothing's really happening. So if we look back and come into our joints, we pick up the screw joint, double click on it, and we look at the pitch radius and set that to 20 millimeters. So we hide the pitch. And now we can take this and drive it through the nut. We alter the pitch to the same value as our thread, but we don't have any threads. So you can see that animation is taking place there. So we have our finished assembly, but let's say if we wanted to change the grounded part. So at the moment, the grounded part is the nut. And I want to change it to the bolt. Allow for the nut to rotate around the bolt. We can't just change this grounded part here. So if I click on the nut and come up to the top and click toggle grounded and then select the bolt and use the toggle grounded. So we swapped the grounded. If we think about what's happening, this can't move now. And the reason why is because if I pull it this way, you can see an axis appear here. Come over to the left hand side, the revolute stops this from moving. Though this is connected with a slider, we're now trying to move a fixed part. So let's fix this assembly. The revolute, I'm going to press the space bar and we can see whereabouts that is. Let's delete the revolute. So now we've just got the slider that slides the nut. But this is wrong because we can move this anywhere. It's just connected to the nut. If this one was grounded, then this will move in and out of the nut. Let's unground that. So we've also got to delete the slider as well. The slider joint. Let's delete that one. So the slider has to slide through the grounded part. This time, let's take the helper and the circular edge and come up and add the slider joint. Let's hit OK. So that slides through there. We now need to use the circular edge. I can use either side and control select the helper and we use a revolve. And hit OK. So now when I take this and move it to the right and left, you can see that the nut is rotating. We didn't have to change the screw joint. Now, one other thing that you may want to do with your assembly is add a restraint on the distance. So if we've got this nut, we can constrain the travel of the nut to the shaft. Look from the right side. At the moment, we go all the way through and out the other side. This is to do with the slider joint. So we double click the slider joint. When I move this, you can see we have a minimum and maximum length. And these are changing. So I'm going to place the nut right up against the bolt. This is in the minus direction, so I'm going to go minimum length. And our maximum length is going this way. You can see this is changing here. We're going to place it right on the edge. We can type in here if we wanted to. Type in, we have to click that so it's enabled, and then type in here. Let's type in zero millimeters. So now when I press OK, this shouldn't go past the head of the bolt, and also go this way, it shouldn't come off the end. So now we've restricted that movement. For a more authentic look, we can use the fasteners workbench or even model our own threads. So I've imported the nut and the screw from a workbench called Fasteners. And this is available from the add-on manager. So tools and add-on manager, and we can search for Fasteners in here. Just click on that and install it, and we get this workbench. 
which has a number of different fasteners and multiple options where we can enable threads and change the diameter. And we basically just bring these all together in the same way, making sure these are all invisible by clicking on them, pressing the space bar, importing them, grounding one part, moving them out of the way, and then add in our constraints in the forms of the joints. When it comes to the rotational joint, we need to find a circle. And then we need to make some modifications. So we bring the nut down towards the bolt. So click on the nut, right click, toggle transparency. We can see in there. Now we need to change the rotation of the nut to allow it to bind with the bolt. So at the moment, we just turn it to find where it meshes properly. So I bring it this way. I can see that they're coming together. Say something like that. Now I can add the screw joint. Click an edge, click another edge, and add the screw joint. Now one thing we need is the pitch radius. And we can search for that just by using Google. I've got an M12 nut, and I want the pitch in millimeters. It's 1.75. Let's change this. And hit enter. So now what we should have is a fully working nut and bolt. I select it, right click, and toggle transparency. So that's how to use the screw joint in the assembly workbench, and also the fasteners to make a more authentic look. Hope you enjoyed that, and I hope to see you in the new video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero, or via PayPal, at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash darren b e stone i also run a patreon where you can get early access and additional content and that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos i thank everybody that's donated so far it really helps to keep the lights on so i can produce more content and also expand the channel thank you for liking commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.